Welcome back to my channel. Yeah, did you ever ask yourself what minimum x86 hardware is required to play a mp3 music file in decent quality as a small player can do? Well, this is what we will find out today. You might think there is not much needed, cause such a cheap 15 years old small mp3 player can do this job nicely, and at some point this is right. MP3 uses lossy data compression to encode data using inexact approximations and the partial discarding of data. This allows a large reduction in file sizes when compared to uncompressed audio. MP3 compression works by reducing the accuracy of certain components of sound that are considered to be beyond the hearing capabilities of most humans. This method is commonly referred to as perceptual coding or as psychoacoustic modeling. So this is interesting, all the filters and reduction of sound is based on research of what is our brain able to recognize. It's like all these pictures with optical illusions where our brain believes something different than it's actually seeing. The compression of MP3 can commonly achieve a 75-95% to reduction in size, so I will not dig deep into the compression algorithms and encoding details, but one thing is sure, decoding a MP3 is highly floating point unit demanding on a x86 CPU. Yeah, but those small MP3 players, they don't have much hardware inside, so we can just see here a small PCB, some memory to store the uh, music, and this main IC here. But if we check the datasheet of this device, we can already see that it contains a lot of different functions as MPEG audio layer 123 decoder, digital voice recording, 24-bit DSP core with memory and on-chip debug support. We have an integrated 8-bit microcontrolling unit, uh, yeah, energy saving, dynamic power management. It has also a built-in stereo, 18-bit uh, Sigma Delta digital analog converter and so on and so on. Yeah, and this is already the big difference to x86 CPUs. The small chip inside the MP3 player contains all needed functions which are needed. This is that called hardware decoding. So this small thing here is actually built exactly for the purpose of decoding audio files. A common x86 CPU is missing all these functions. That means all calculations have to be done by software emulation, or also called then software decoding. And that needs a lot more CPU resources than hardware decoding. It's the same like for video games, hardware rendering or software rendering. And we all know software rendering needs a lot more CPU resources than a dedicated video card, which is natively fulfilling the job. So for our test I prepared some audio files with different bit rates. Basically I consider 128 kilobit and 44 kilohertz as a minimum to have somehow okay quality to listen music. So the definition at the end will be which CPU is able to decode that. And again I'm talking here just about x86 CPUs based on DOS operating system. No ARM CPUs, no Motorola stuff and no Linux operating system. Pure DOS. For this I prepared 5 CPUs here, a 486DX33, a DX266, then a DX2 with 80 MHz, a DX4 with 100 MHz and a Pentium Overdrive at the end. Yeah, the test will be done under DOS with a player called MPX. Windows 95 I will not cover here, cause Windows itself needs already CPU resources. Yeah, and this main board I will use for the test, the ASUS PVI486 SP3. It comes up with 8 megabytes of memory here and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Uh, actually, these boards can support all CPUs I prepared for this test. As a sound card, I will use the Creative CT2890. It's a quite nice sound card, which contains also a original Yamaha OPL3 chip. But first, let's start with our old MP3 player. It can play the file in full 320 kilobit quality without any issues. So then let's start with our first CPU, the 486DX with 33 megahertz. Then let's uh, start the program. MP3 
MPX play. So here we have the nice DOS uh, program for playing music and on this side here we can see later on the CPU load uh, while this is playing. Actually it goes never directly to full 100%. So let's try first the 128 kilobit and we can hear already it's fully chipping. No chance that this CPU can decode this 128 kilobit in stereo. So then let's go ahead with a little bit lower quality with 64 kilobits in stereo. And also here it's full chipping and the CPU is not able to decode this. So then let's try in mono with 64 kilobits, maybe here, but also no chance. The file is full chipping now and no possibility to listen to that. Yeah, so actually the DX33 is out of the game, even with 22 kilohertz of bandwidth, no chance to play this file. So with 33 megahertz on F86, there is no chance to play these files. Then let's go ahead with the next CPU, the Intel 486DX2 at 66 MHz, a quite nice CPU from the 90s. Then let's start first with 128 kilobits per second in stereo and already we can hear it's chipping fully, so no chance that it can play this file. Let's try it with 64 kilobits in stereo and also here it's chipping and the CPU is not able to play this. But with 64 kilobyte, kilobits in mono, it's able to play this file. So very nice, we can see a big improvement. The DX266 is able to play a MP3 file with 64 kilobits and mono. Yeah, then let's go ahead with the next CPU, the AMD 486DX280. So we have an internal clock of 80 megahertz. And yeah, let's start again with 128 kilobits in stereo. Yeah, and again, it's chipping. So no chance also for this CPU to play this MP3 file in the quality we would like to have. Then let's go on with 64 kilobits in stereo and after a small chip on the beginning we can see it's able to play the 64 kilobits in stereo now compared to the DX266 which was only able to play it in mono. So we can see here small improvements while we are increasing the CPU performance. Yeah, the next CPU, the Intel DX4 at 100 megahertz. And we start again with 128 kilobits in stereo. So yes, so this CPU can actually handle then 128 kilobits in stereo without any issues. So we are here about at 80 something percent of CPU load, uh, a quite nice improvement compared to the other CPUs now. Let's go ahead and try 192 kilobits. Yeah, and also at 192 kilobits, we have no chipping here. So this CPU can handle nicely all these MP3 files here now. Also curious then how it will go on with 320 kilobits, so the full quality. Yeah, also here, no problems at all. This CPU can handle also 300 kilobits at 44 kilohertz the MP3 files. So very nice and we are at about at somehow 90% CPU load. So at the end there is no need to try the, the Pentium overdrive because we found already our desired CPU which is able to play in the quality we want to have. But nevertheless we will try the Pentium CPU to see uh, the CPU load compared then to the DX4100. Yeah, and that's 320 kilobits. Of course, the Pentium Overdrive is playing the file nicely. The only difference we can see here is just about a little bit above 30% of CPU load compared to the DX4100 at about 90% CPU load. Yeah, and for all those 
who might say at Windows 3.11 or so it's maybe better. I also tried that with an MP3 player under Windows and we have the same effects here at the 486DX33 for instance. We have this chipping, so no improvements under Windows. So I figured out that the DOS player was the best choice I could go for. Yeah, then let's summarize this a bit. The DX33 unfortunately could not decode anything, while with double clock we could play at least something in mono. The DX280 could offer then low quality in stereo. Yeah, and then the big jump with the DX4100. The CPU can play all up to 320 kilobits. So this could be maybe explained of the 16 kilobytes of level 1 cache the CPU has. Also the Pentium performs well with a CPU load of 38% at full quality. So the answer to our question from the beginning is the DX4100 is the minimum CPU requirement to decode a 128 kilobit MP3 file. Yeah, anyhow, it's so weird that you need all this to replace that. Hmm. I hope you liked the video and if so, please subscribe and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.